The theory of prehistoric cosmic detonation is generally acknowledged by most researchers as the essential clarification for the starting points of the universe, enveloping the production of stars, planets, and all life in that, including us. Notwithstanding its fairly unconventional name, the term, huge explosion, appropriately catches the immensity of the occasion. At first, the universe was a thick assortment of particles pressed into a space more modest than a pinhead. From this minute point, an enormous blast of issue happened, known as the huge explosion. This concisely sums up the interaction that unfurled more than billions of years. Be that as it may, regardless of the persevering fame of the theory of how things came to be, progressions in logical information have progressively tested its forecast. At the point when NASA sent off the James Webb Space Telescope, the biggest and most developed space observatory to date, Researchers guessed that its perceptions would reinforce the theory of prehistoric cosmic detonation. Unfortunately, after only one year in space, the telescope has dumbfounded researchers with its momentous capacities, giving extraordinary looks into the universe's past. The James Webb Telescope's disclosures have revealed systems so old that they might actually reshape how we interpret the universe's beginnings. This unexpected disclosure has started extreme interest among researchers and fans the same. One such noteworthy disclosure came when stargazer Rohan Natu, breaking down early pictures from the James Webb Telescope, coincidentally found a system that surprised everyone. This universe, named Glass Z13, seemed mysteriously gigantic and traced all the way back to only a short time after the enormous detonation, making it older than any previously noticed world. Natu's energy was tangible as he imparted the revelation to partners on the planet, depicting it as beyond anything astronomers could ever imagine. The James Webb Telescope, positioned far from natural impedance and furnished with state-of-the-art innovation, was intended to dive into the universe's earliest age known as Grandio Sunrise. This period, covered in mystery, denotes the development of the universe's most memorable stars and worlds. By examining systems from this period, Researchers desire to refine how they interpret major inestimable cycles like the impact of matter and dark energy. Initial assumptions for the James Webb Telescope's discoveries were humble, expecting a couple of weak far-off universes. However, the reality surpassed all projections. The telescope's pictures uncovered systems of amazing development, testing existing models and provoking a whirlwind of examination activity. As researchers keep on dissecting the James Webb Telescope's information, the ramifications of these revelations could be significant, introducing another time of cosmological comprehension. The surprising disclosures from this noteworthy observatory offer a tempting look into the universe's past, driving humanity's journey to disentangle the secrets of presence. As early systems materialized, scholars and spectators ended up in a scramble to make sense of them. Might this gathering of oddly enormous and splendid early worlds at any point be fanciful, perhaps due to blemishes in the examination of the telescope's underlying perceptions. Or if authentic, might they at any point some way or another be accommodated with standard cosmological models? Or quite possibly, would they say they were the main means that the universe is stranger and more complex than our boldest speculations had assumed? In question isn't anything not exactly how we might interpret how the precise universe we know arose out of early stage confusion. The early disclosures from the James Webb Space Telescope can possibly revise the initial parts of Grandio history. These sections concern far-off ages and distant systems, as well as our own presence here in the natural smooth manner. Mark McCarran, a senior counsel for science and investigation at the European Space Office engaged with JWST, commented, You fabricate these machines not to affirm the worldview yet to break it, you simply don't have the foggiest idea how it will break. It could be said that JWST's perceptions of early universes have been billions of years really taking shape. Nonetheless, more unobtrusively, they follow back to the Space Telescope Science Foundation in 1985. Around then, the Hubble Space Telescope was as yet five years from send-off, however, the establishment's then-chief, Ricardo Jawan, requested that his group begin contemplating what might come after Hubble, a lot further away. Despite initial debates about focusing on Hubble, Jawan was tenacious, predicting an extensive improvement process. Guy Linger, then deputy director of SD. Sky, alongside a small team, began drafting ideas for what eventually became the Cutting Edge Space Telescope, later renamed JWST. 
They recognized that while Hubble would be groundbreaking, its capabilities would be limited by its perceptions in visible light. The NGST, on the other hand, would see in the infrared spectrum, allowing it to delve deeper into the universe. The need for JWST became even more apparent in December 1995 when cosmologists conducted the Hubble Deep Field observation. Despite expectations of finding a few faint galaxies, the resulting image revealed thousands of worlds stretching back more than 12 billion years into the universe's history. After over 20 years of development and at a cost of around $1 billion, JWST finally launched on Christmas Day 2021. The telescope underwent rigorous testing before reaching its deep space destination a month later. By July 2022, it was ready to begin its eagerly anticipated first year of science observations, known as Cycle 1. Part of JWST's initial mission was dedicated to high-impact programs, including the Astronomical Evolution Early Release Science Survey and the Grizz Lens Amplified Survey from Space. Both aimed to shed light on the mysteries of the early universe. As astronomers devoted countless hours to scanning various patches of the sky, they initially expected modest findings akin to a more refined version of the Hubble Deep Field. However, they were in for a surprise. Stephen Finkelstein from the University of Texas at Austin, leading the SE program, figured that very distant galaxies were presumed to emerge only after many data cycles from other projects. Yet, to cosmologists' astonishment, these galaxies appeared much earlier than anticipated. Previously, the record for the most distant known galaxy belonged to GNZ 11, discovered in 2015 with a redshift of 11. Redshift measures the stretching of light due to the universe's expansion, with a higher value indicating greater distance. However, from the very outset of JWST's observations, two separate teams, including one led by Rohan Natu, independently identified Glass Z13 with a redshift of 13, pushing the cosmic timeline back significantly further. In their scramble for quick results, researchers relied on improved techniques for redshift assessment based on brightness measurements, rather than more time-intensive direct measurements. Despite their simplicity, these estimates revealed galaxies unexpectedly bright and massive, some already boasting a stellar mass equivalent to a billion suns. Just like our own Milky Way, which is billions of years more mature, the excitement didn't stop there. In the following days, multiple galaxy candidates from pan stars and glass emerged, some with redshift estimates as high as 20, suggesting they existed within just a few hundred million years after the Big Bang. These galaxies displayed disk-like structures not expected in such early cosmic epochs. Furthermore, another team found evidence of Milky Way-like galaxies at a redshift of 10, less than 500 million years after the Big Bang. Such rapid formation of sizable galaxies challenges the predictions of the standard cosmological model, Lambda Cold Dark Matter LCDM. To grasp this anomaly, a brief return to early universe dynamics is essential. In the initial minutes after the Big Bang, the universe was a hot, dense soup of primordial particles. Over time, as the universe expanded and cooled, helium and other light elements formed leading to the existence of the first atoms nearly 400,000 years later. Approximately 100 million years after the Big Bang, conditions became conducive for the formation of the first stars, primarily composed of hydrogen and helium. These early stars, larger and brighter than modern stars, clustered into proto-galaxies guided by the gravitational pull of dark matter. However, JWST's revelations challenge this model as it uncovers bright, sizable galaxies far earlier than expected. Stacy McGore from Case Western Reserve University noted the surprising absence of numerous smaller protogalactic fragments, suggesting that some observed galaxies may be closer than assumed, obscured by dust and appearing dimmer and farther away. The discovery of early galaxies raises significant questions about the universe's early stages, highlighting the need for continued investigation and refinement of our cosmological models. Follow-up observations of Glass Z13 by the Atacama Large Millimeter Submillimeter Array ALMA in August 2022 cast doubt on the initial findings. Despite using brightness-based measurements, ALMA failed to detect significant amounts of dust associated with Glass Z13 as pointed out by Pete Tomby from Goya College, who led the observations. This suggests that low redshift interlopers could be excluded, but Alma struggled to detect the galaxy at all. 
This underscores the challenge of confirming observations made using JWST's high precision capabilities. Rohan Natu, one of the researchers involved, highlighted the incongruity of the situation, stating, The good news is there's nothing identified, he said. The bad news is there's nothing identified with just JWST capable of returning to its own observations. The most unsettling explanation could be that the established LCDM cosmological model requires updating. Michael Bohan Cullen, a cosmologist, expressed the magnitude of this potential paradigm shift, saying, these results are very surprising and challenging to fit into our standard model of cosmology. It would be a true revolution to understand this quandary. One controversial proposal is modified Newtonian dynamics MONT which challenges the existence of dark matter. JWST's observations could lend support to MOND, proposed by Mark McCarran. However, not all cosmologists are convinced of MOND's validity. Another possible explanation is that early universe galaxies may have very little dust, causing them to appear brighter and affecting mass calculations. This scenario could also explain ALMA's difficulty in detecting glass Z13. Charlotte Bricklay and her colleagues suggested that JWST might be observing the most luminous young galaxies in the early universe, implying simpler star formation conditions during that era. David Spergel supported this idea, suggesting that high-mass star formation could have been more efficient due to higher gas pressures and temperatures possibly influenced by early gravitational fields. The rapid dissemination of scientific papers from JWST's initial observations reflects a shift towards real-time peer review via platforms like Archive and Virtual Conferences. While this accelerates the dissemination of findings, there are concerns about rushing to conclusions before thorough peer review. Despite alignment issues and potential recalibrations affecting some results, it's unlikely that all high-redshift galaxies observed by JWST will be invalidated. The sheer number of these galaxies suggests that the early universe may be different from what was previously anticipated. Finkelstein expressed confidence in the legitimacy of the discoveries, saying, the chances of astronomers being completely wrong are small. Now, astronomers are rushing to conduct follow-up observations with JWST. Nancy Levinson is currently evaluating around 12 proposals from various groups seeking additional JWST observing time to examine high redshift galaxy candidates. Given the excitement and significance of these early discoveries, confirming them is crucial. Try, who submitted one of the proposals, emphasized the importance of confirming these findings. Other projects like the Cosmos Web, led by Cartel T, aim to expand the known population of early galaxies by observing a wider area of the sky for many hours. T estimates they could detect thousands of galaxies. Furthermore, additional projects will seek evidence of the first proto-galaxies, possibly using the explosive deaths of supersized first stars and brilliant supernovae as markers for their existence. Some estimates suggest JWST could observe galaxies to a redshift of 26, just 120 million years after the Big Bang. Confirming even a handful of these high redshift candidates would be a remarkable achievement. In conclusion, JWST has ushered in a new era of science, and despite uncertainties, the rapid communication of new discoveries has energized the academic community. Tro expressed excitement about the engaged and stimulated academic community. Now, the question arises as to whether it's time to reconsider how we interpret the early universe. The significant implications of exploring the unexplored universe promise to reshape our understanding of existence. Remember to show your support by liking, subscribing, and spreading the word. Your support inspires us to continue delivering quality content and strive for improvement. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time.